PhD and my master's in science and psychology from the University of Illinois. And why are you here today, Dr. Couples? I was retained by Andy and Lee Park to determine if Jesse Duran may have any condition that would explain why she may have deliberately pointed a loaded firearm at City Park on the day in question. And did you use any type of methodology in today's case? Uh, yes, I use a methodology that I call the CCC method. It's collect, consider, conclude. And is this methodology peer reviewed? Absolutely. And does it rely on specific uh, data, facts, and figures? It does. And did you rely on this in your conclusions today? I did. Now, moving on to the first step of your methodology, collect. Uh, what did you collect in today's case? Well, first I did, first I was, I got the affidavits of Danny Brooks, who is a former, who was the most recent former babysitter. I also did interviews with the other former babysitters. Um, I got the affidavit from uh, Andy Park, who is Sydney's mother, as well as Hayden Duran, who is Jesse's mother, and as well as from Terry Chapman, who was the neighbor of uh, Jesse Duran. He was the first respondent to the scene. And is there anything else you collect today? Well, I also collected uh, statements. Uh, and it, it was a disciplinary notice by the school, as well as I did interviews with former classmates and former teachers. OK, so moving on to the second step of your methodology, uh, consider. Well, what did you consider in today's case? I considered the psycho psychological test used for children under the age of 16 called the PAIJ test. Now that stands for Psychopathy Assessment Instrument for Juveniles. It's basically the relied upon method for testing whether someone could have psychopathy when they're under 16. Now you mentioned psychopathy. Um, can you please elaborate on this uh, for the court? Oh, absolutely. Psychopathy is basically when someone has intense egocentrism as well as, uh, as, well as a lack of empathy for other people, one that would everyone has normally. And is this pertinent to any other type of psychological disorder? Um, this is actually very different from psychosis. Now, psychosis is a, is a condition where the victim sees delusions. They don't, see, they don't perceive the world as everyone else does. However, this is very different from psychopathy. In psychopathy, the person can still view and perceive everything the same as anyone else. However, the way that they view it morally is something that most people would find very different. Okay, so I'd like to for, uh, move further along. Uh, you mentioned a psychopathy test. Uh, can you please elaborate on that? First? Yes, so the PAIJ test, the Psychopathy Assessment Instrument for Juveniles. Now, it relies upon 10 criteria, which scored from zero to two. The zero being that it never, the criteria never applies, one being that it sometimes applies, and two being it very clearly applies. And what aggregate score is necessary to diagnose psychopathy? For juveniles under the age of 16, an aggregate score of 12 is required to diagnose someone with psychopathy. And you also mentioned the scores that Jesse could receive. Uh, were, were there any specific categories where Jesse received a 2? Uh, yes, Jesse received a 2 on four categories. One of the categories was guiltless lying. Now, this was attested to by many of the interviews I did with former classmates and teachers. However, one, one incident that stuck with me quite strongly was that a former babysitter actually witnessed as Jesse Duran attempted to flush a neighbor's cat down the toilet. Now, when she was approached by her mother, she was completely calm. She was completely unremorseful and gave a very solid, guiltless lie that she had no idea what had happened. Objection to character evidence. Um, First, give me an explanation, defense, please. Um, the witness is trying to imply that because Jesse lied in the past, that Jesse would act in accordance with that and lie in the future. Response, please. Um, Your Honor, this is not um, improper character evidence. He's simply basing this um, off of his expert conclusions. And also, psychopathy, which he's alluding to, is also an exception to the rule of 4404 provided to us under Hamilton versus Walton, which is in the case law, which I can provide to you. Which case? Hamilton versus Walton. <clears throat> and it should be uh, the last few lines. Yeah. Um, response defense? Uh, Your Honor? Yes. Hamilton v. Walton is only for lay witnesses. It does not specify that expert witnesses 
can you cite lack of conditions as an exception to 404? I'm going to grant the objection. Um, the, go ahead and proceed. Please. Motion to strike any elicited testimony from the record. Stricken. Go ahead and proceed, please. Um, so were there any other categories where Jesse received a two? Yeah, there was another category which Jesse received a two. It was persistent aggression. Now, this is basically, this was corroborated by many of my interviews, especially from people who had a sustained relationship with Jesse. However, it was also in part by the disciplinary notice I received. <clears throat> and, um, Your Honor, let the record reflect that um, I am showing opposing counsel <clears throat> what has been previously labeled as kind of three. No objection to the authenticity of this document, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, permission to approach the witness. <clears throat> now, what is it that I am just showing Dr. Couples? This was a notification of student discipline sent from the school to Hayden Duran concerning Jesse Duran's behavior. Uh, permission to tender this into evidence, Doc? Were there any objections from the defense counsel? Uh, objection to hearsay. Plaintiff, do you have a response? Your Honor, this is not an objection to hearsay. He's simply giving an expert opinion on materials that he's already been introduced to and he's just forming uh, parts of his conclusions. Response defense? Your Honor, it's an out of court statement being used to prove the truth of the matter asserted, meaning that it is hearsay. Uh, may I respond real quick? Uh, yes. Um, Your Honor, he's an expert, and expert witnesses, according to Rule 703, are allowed to use um, evidence that's been introduced to them to form their conclusions. Although that is true, he is an expert witness, and he's allowed to do this. Okay. Um, the objection is granted as to the introduction of the statement into evidence. However, the witness may testify to his opinions based upon uh, the affidavits. Yes, Your Honor. And does this influence your findings at all? Yeah, this, this influenced the category of persistent aggression. And how does this pertain to persistent aggression of Jesse? Well, this student discipline notice describes an incident uh, uh, where they were playing dodgeball in the school. And Jesse Duran, during the game, screamed, hey, and he ran over to the other side of the dodgeball, of, uh, dodgeball court, and he said, I hit you, you're dead, you need to fall down and die. Now, this, this incident in itself was not enough for persistent aggression. However, along with the interviews, and it also, towards the end, references two other incidents because it says this is the third incident uh, of this year, which Jesse has struck another student. Objection to character evidence. Response, please. Um, Your Honor, the expert is just trying to uh, base more testimony off of the fact that he has psychopathy, and this piece of evidence represents the fact um, it's something that he reviewed, and it just pertains to the fact that he's more psychopathic in his expert opinion. Response, please. Your Honor, referring you back to your previous ruling. The witnesses tried to imply that because Jesse acted a certain way in the past, that Jesse will act in conformity with that in the future. They tried to imply that because Jesse struck someone in the past, that Jesse will do so in the future. Uh, <clears throat> the objection. We're, we're, we're not trying to. I, oops, sorry. Uh, the objection is going to be overruled at this point. Yes, uh, the witness may testify as to his professional opinion. Absolutely. She, um, now, you also mentioned that he could have received um, a one on a category. Did he receive um, that score from a particular category? One of the categories which he received a one was vandalism. Uh, I got this primarily from interviews I conducted with the, with the students, the other student classmates, uh, particularly the ones that he walked to and from school with. They described Jesse as doing things <coughs> such as throwing rocks at cars on the way home, as well as hitting mailboxes with a baseball bat. Now, however, it was only classmates, so I can only confidently give it a one. And were there any other categories in which he received a one? Another category he received a one was petty theft. Uh, this was extremely common throughout my interviews, as well as in some of the affidavits. Uh, the, the teachers described Jesse taking things from other students. The students described him taking things from the teacher. And the babysitters have described him, have described finding things from other children's houses. Now you also mentioned he could have received uh, potentially a zero on a category. Did this happen? Yeah, this did, this did happen. There were two categories in which he received a zero. That was cutting class or cutting curfew, as well as early sexual experimentation. 
and how is this significant to today's case? Now, Jesse Duran is significantly under the age of 16, which is the max age for the PIAJ test. And in my professional opinion, these two categories are often found in children that are slightly older than Jesse was at the time. So if, it, if he was older, it's possible that these signs could have happened. So what was the total aggregate score that you gave Jesse for the psychopathy test? The total aggregate score I gave Jesse for the psychopathy test was a 12. And a 12, there, therefore, in my field, is enough to diagnose him as a psychopath. So moving on um, to last up your methodology, conclude. Uh, what can you conclude in today's case? Um, I can conclude, conclude two things. First, I can conclude that Jesse Duran, it should not be assumed that Jesse Duran would have had any difficulty in harming Sidney Park on August 18th, 2010. My second conclusion is that none of Jesse Duran's statements should be taken at face value. Now, the two hallmarks I mentioned earlier about someone with psychopathy, the egocentrism and lack of empathy, are coupled by a third hallmark. And that is that they are incredibly good at hiding these two facts. They can find what statements work best for them. They can use the emotions of other people to try to get whatever result that they feel they, uh, they need to obtain. Thank you, Your Honor. I have no further questions. The defense counsel, Cross? Yes, Your Honor. The ball back to the defense. May I inquire? Good morning, Mr. Cross. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. You diagnosed Jesse as a psychopath. That's correct. To do so, did you spend five hours with Jesse? Oh, I'm sorry. Your lawyers would not allow me to speak with Jesse Duran when I requested. So you didn't spend any time at all with Jesse before diagnosing her as a psychopath? Uh, as I just answered, I attempted to. However, this did not change my conclusions, and I was still able to make. I still able to make based on reliable facts and data, you know, or the conclusions that I made today. But you do agree that it was not ideal? I answered that, yes. You'd agree that it did pose challenges? Um, it poses, of course it's not ideal, of course it's not ideal when you don't speak to the person you're trying to diagnose. However, this is very common in these types of cases, and it didn't affect my conclusions. You would agree that it did make your job much more difficult. Not much more difficult. It posed challenges, yeah, except I would not say that it made it much more difficult. You didn't interview <coughs> Hayden Duran either before diagnosing Jesse. Oh, that's a very similar story. Uh, I approached Hayden Duran, and I also, he also refused to speak with me. So to make this clear for the jury, you did not interview Hayden or Jesse Duran or coming to the conclusion that Jesse was a psychopath? No, I interviewed the people that he saw all day, the babysitters, because Hayden worked, as mentioned earlier. Hayden works. So uh, he spent a lot of time with babysitters. He spent the rest of the time at school. I interviewed classmates, teachers. I interviewed the people that he spent the most time with. But yes, it would have been better to interview a couple more people. So you interviewed former teachers? I did interview former teachers. You interviewed former babysitters? Yes. You interviewed former classmates and playmates of Jesse? Yes. But nowhere in your report do you mention how well they knew Jesse? I don't mention how well they knew Jesse. However, I do mention in some of the aspects that certain classmates were walked to and from with Jesse. Also, many of the classmates uh, were just in the same class, so just being around. Also, the teachers, they were, their te they were Jesse's teachers. They graded his papers, they read his reports, they read Whenever he wrote something, uh, they had, at the very minimally, a teacher-student relationship. But bringing you back to my question, no one in your report do you mention how well they knew Jesse? I didn't find it necessary to write specifically on my report that classmates spent time in class with Jesse. No one in your report do you mention how long they knew Jesse? Um, they were the classmates of Jesse. I'd like to now bring you to your assessment. You tested Jesse on 10 different traits. That's correct. And to refresh the jury, a zero meant that the trait never applied. Yes. A one meant that the traits sometimes are somewhat applied. Yes. And a two meant 
the trait clearly applied. Yes. Now, you mentioned on direct exam examination uh, persistent aggression. Yes? That's correct. You scored Jesse a two for this. Yes. Meaning you believe the trait clearly applied. I do believe that. To come to this conclusion, you reviewed the affidavit of Danny Brooks. I did review the affidavit of Danny Brooks. Danny Brooks frequently babysat Jesse and Sydney together. He did frequently babysit Jesse and Sydney together. Yes. And Danny never saw Jesse threaten Sydney. No, he did not. Danny never saw Jesse hit Sydney. He did not see uh, Jesse hit Sydney. In fact, Danny Brooks never saw Jesse hurt Sydney in any way. Well, only on video games. It seems as if, like, in Psychopaths, you often find a, an obsession. So, I, I don't want to make any conclusions here, but it seems as if he really liked guns. So, in order for him to get out some of his, I don't know, persistent aggression, it could have somewhat come from uh, the playing of, of the video games. Is it your testimony today that Danny Brooks did see Jesse harm Sydney? Um, in the video game, I would argue he did. Of course, he saw Jesse Dur Duran harm Sydney uh, in the video game. opposing counsel with what's been referred to as this witness's report. This is also <clears throat> Let the record reflect that I'm now coaching the witness with the same. Any objections from I have no objection. Okay. Report. 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 David. Is this a fair and accurate copy of your report? Uh, yes. Were you given 24 hours to change this report? I was. And is your name at the top? Yes. I'd like to refer you to paragraph 3.4. Please read silently as I read aloud. I began by reviewing the affidavit of Danny Brooks. Did I read that correctly? Uh, you read that correctly. I would like to refer you to the affidavit of Danny Brooks. This is this a fair and accurate copy? Uh, yes. And is that Danny Brooks' name at the top? That is Danny Brooks' name at the top. I would like to refer you to line 53. Now, read silently as I read aloud. I never saw Jesse threaten, hit, kick, punch, or hurt Sydney in any way. Did, did I read that correctly? You did read that correctly. I never said that he threatened, punched, hit, or kicked Sydney. I was only referring to the violence in the video game, as I clearly expressed multiple times. If you go back to the record, he had he was violent towards Sydney in the video game. He was, of course, he was not physically violent to Sydney. I read the affidavit. Permission to retrieve. Yeah, David Miller's pushing here. Uh, referring you back to my question, you never, Danny never saw Jesse hurt Sydney in any way. Danny never saw Jesse physically hurt Sydney. Uh, I think that's what you're trying to ask me, and I would agree with that question. So that's that's what I'm asking. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, if that's a question which is different, yes. I, Danny never saw Sid physic or Jesse Sid physically hurt Sid. I'd like to now move on to another trait you tested, indifference to the pain of others. You did test that, yes? I did. You read the affidavit of Terry Chapin and come to this conclusion? Yes. And you scored Jesse one for this? Yes, I did. Meaning the trait sometimes or someone applies. Sorry, what was the category that you referred to? Indifference to the pain of others. Yes, I scored Jesse Duran a one on this. Terry Chapin walked into the park's home and asked Jesse what happened. Uh, he did do that. Jesse 
covered her face. Jesse was full length. Jesse was calm. According to Terry Chapman, Jesse was calm, emotionless, and sat there. It was strange to Terry Chapman, actually. But when Terry asked Jesse what happened, Jesse covered her face, yes? Uh, yes. Jesse began sobbing. After, after, staring, after standing there for a significant amount of time, according to Chapin, she did begin sobbing, but it wasn't until after she was sitting there, blank-faced, emotionless. Well, bringing you back to my question, Jesse did begin sobbing, yes? At one point, Jesse did begin sobbing. She tried to speak, but no words came out. Um, according to Terry Chapin, yes. And when they did, her voice was trembling. It was. It was a very traumatic experience. I deal with extremely traumatic experiences with juveniles all the time, and uh, this was, that response made sense. However, what was shocking was before that when she was very calm. I'd now like to bring you to another trait you tested, animal cruelty. Yes. There were two relevant instances of this that you found, yes? Yes, there were two, there were two incidents. The first occurred when Jesse was five. Yes. Jesse attempted to flush a cat down the toilet. That's the neighbor's cat. Wasn't even Jesse's own cat. Now, as a child psychologist, you do recognize that children sometimes do things they aren't supposed to do. Yes. However, children are often very intrigued by animals. They often have almost a little bit of connection with them. So having someone harm an animal, or if they're either very first intention at age five, is incredibly, incredibly uh, indicative of being assigned. Anywhere in your report do you mention any intent on the part of Jesse to harm that cat? Um, there is no, I was not at the scene. It was witnessed by a former babysitter. And so I could not confidently put on the report that Jesse was, the intent of Jesse Duran, I was not in the mind so of Jesse Duran. You can't say with any confidence that Jesse was trying to harm that cat. Uh, Jesse Duran tried to flush the cat down the toilet. You do recognize that children occasionally do attempt to flush things down the toilet, though, don't you, Dr. Couples? Uh, yes, they do. They, they try to flush all different kinds of things, but rarely animals, rarely animals. I'd like to now bring you to the second instance you mentioned, which occurred when Jesse was seven? Yes, when Jesse was seven. She was with a classmate, and they were both throwing pine cones at squirrels in the, in the schoolyard. So Jesse was not the only child doing this. That's correct. And once again, you don't mention anywhere in your report that Jesse was attempting to harm these squirrels. Yes, it's very important to, like, I think you're, you're implying something that I think I just need to explain really fast. So basically, all of these indicators are not uncommon with any child. However, to have so many indicators, that's why the score of a minimum of 12 is necessary. That's when you actually have a diagnosis of psychopathy. However, any one trait, it's not necessarily uncommon, especially to get a score of one on any of these traits. That's not uncommon for children, of course. But for this instance, there were only two. For animal cruelty, there were only two instances. Yeah, yes, there were two instances. And for either of these instances, you can't prove that Jesse was trying to harm these animals. During my research, I've done, I've, I've researched uh, juvenile psychopathy for the past 10 years, and through my expert report, I, I determined that this was enough evidence to warrant a one on my score. Unless you believe that I'm incorrect in that. I'm not a child psychologist, so right. I can't really speculate as to what the score should have been. But you did score Jesse one for that, did you not? Yes, and Jesse deserved a one. And to be clear, Jesse only passed your assessment by a single point, correct? Yes, as I mentioned, the other two categories which I received a zero, which I scored a zero, were categories that could have happened later. I'd now like to bring you to those two categories. Yes. Your test, as you said, has a maximum age of 16. It does have a maximum age of 16 in general. But the minimum is 12. That's, that's correct. And Jesse was only 11 when you assessed her, correct? Jesse was only 11. However, someone can be a psychopath at age 5, at age 6. 
there's no, there's no debate in the psychological community about whether someone can be a psychopath. However, the exact guidelines for the PAIJ test are, in fact, from 12 to 16. That is correct. And those two factors you just mentioned, you could not find in Jesse. I could not. Because they're normally shown by older subjects. Well, they're not always shown by older subjects, but it's incredibly more likely that you could have scored higher. It's very rare for someone under that age group to exhibit those. Yes, those two categories. The other categories can be exhibited from younger than Yet, despite that, you still conducted this test anyway. Yes, I conducted this test. I would now like to bring you to your diagnosis. There is debate within the psychological community as to whether it's even appropriate to diagnose children under a certain age as a psychopath. Yes, um, I just mentioned that uh, any ch ch a child at any age can be a psychopath. Um, it, that's not debated in the psychological community. It's just the only thing that's debated is the about whether to actually call them a psychopath, the syntax of it. However, it's not debated on whether they can exhibit signs under the age of 12. Specifically, there's debate as to whether you should diagnose a child under a certain age as a psychopath. Is there not? Yes, there is a debate on whether you should actually diagnose. That comes with labeling and such. No further questions. Thank you, counsel. <clears throat> is there any redirect? Uh, we do not have any redirect. All right. You were dismissed. Thank you for your testimony. All right, thank you. Plaintiffs, do you have any more witnesses to call? No, Your Honor. At this time, the plaintiffs rest this case in chief and ask for a brief five minute recess before the defense begins theirs. Recess granted. Five minutes, though. So. Yes, Your Honor.